So it's a long day and you just finished the second dose of your COVID-19 vaccine. What could be the first thing that's going through your mind? For me, it was, ah, finally, no more restrictions. And I know for sure that you guys have the same thought. Although just to be on the safer side, we should still wear our masks for the people who are still getting immunized. Now, creating a vaccine in order to work against a virus that doesn't have any cure is somewhat difficult and a lengthy process. In 1967, Dr. Marie Selman's vaccine for mumps was approved after four years. This was the fastest vaccine that was ever developed in the history of mankind. Until now, thanks to the hardworking researchers who worked day and night in order to develop the COVID-19 vaccines. The miraculous breakthrough of the COVID vaccine shattered previous records. I mean, come on, just look at the charts for the famous vaccines that took decades to develop. COVID vaccines was created within less than a year from development to all the way to approval. So let's take a look at how COVID-19 has created a turning point for vaccine technologies in the decades to come. Vaccines teach our immune system how to protect our body from the new virus. Traditionally, there are four types of vaccines. The most common type of vaccines work by exposing our body to the virus. But don't worry about it. The virus is either weakened or dead, so won't harm your body. This is how the mumps and the annual flu vaccines work. Another type of vaccine can be addressed as a toxoid or inactivated toxin. It uses an inactivated toxin instead of the virus. The most common example for these type of vaccines would be a tetanus shot. The final type of vaccine works differently from the other three. It only uses a tiny part of the vaccine instead of the whole thing. Common examples of it would be the influenza injections. One of the new COVID vaccines also rely on these traditional vaccines, particularly the fourth one. It uses a small part of the COVID-19 virus known as the spike protein. It's harmless when it's injected into your body, but it still recognizes the threat. Your body will launch an immune response to fight off these proteins, and that's more than enough to teach the immune systems how to fight off the virus. But deciphering and creating the spike protein from this virus is a lengthy process. Researchers first have to research the virus, isolate the spikes, modify it, multiply it, and finally, assemble the vaccines. In fact, all four of these vaccines need much longer time as it requires researching the live viruses in the lab. A vaccine has to go through many steps before it can reach the mass population. Most importantly, it needs to be developed. But working with live viruses makes the process a lot longer. It takes almost 5 to 10 years to be approved in the United States. Most of the COVID-19 vaccines got through the process a lot faster by overlapping human trials and starting manufacturing early. Even after that, the main drawback of the vaccines were in the developing phase as it takes most of the time. However, some researchers found a groundbreaking way to speed up this process by overlapping the lab work with the preclinical trials. When a virus enters into your body, it will attach itself to one of your cells and inject its DNA or RNA into them. This almost works like a blueprint for your cell to create more copies of the virus itself and infect your whole body. That's when we have our immune systems kick in. It will recognize the virus as a foreign threat and will try to eradicate them. The same way, the new type of vaccines carries the DNA or RNA of the particular virus. But rather than multiplying into the virus itself, it carries the instruction to create a harmless part of the virus, the spike proteins. That's where these new types of vaccines come in. They carry instructions. Let's look at the new mRNA vaccines. The key idea of these type of vaccines are to train your immune system to recognize the spike proteins and make your own body produce them. To do that, researchers took the virus's blueprint, its RNA, and isolated the part responsible for producing the spikes. This is called the mRNA or messenger RNA. It's a special form of RNA that can enter your cells and give them instructions. In this case, the RNA carries the instruction to create the spikes from the coronavirus. Your cell reads the instruction and produces a large volume of spikes. 
Once this is happening, your immune system kicks into action and starts to learn how to fight the spikes of your body. That is more than enough to teach your immune system to prevent the virus from infecting multiple cells. This is how the new COVID-19 vaccines Pfizer and Moderna work. But with its upsides, it also has some major drawbacks. The main drawback of the mRNA vaccines is that it breaks down very easily. It needs to be protected by a fatty barrier and kept ultra cold, which is an ideal for all around the globe. Another type of newly effective vaccine also works similarly as the mRNA, but uses DNA instead of RNA. The COVID vaccines from AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson are from these types. It also has its own drawbacks as well. You see, the DNA enters your body through a harmless carrier or a harmless virus. In time, your body will learn how to fight the harmless virus instead of the main thing. So the future doses will become less and less effective over time. Although there are new types of COVID variants that are showing up recently, research predicts that vaccines could be less effective against these new types of COVID variants. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell icon to know more about COVID with many other unknowns. If you liked the video, then be sure to break that like button and check out the previous content about which vaccines you should take. Until then, stay safe and be sure to tell somebody you love them. Peace out.